Hello, hello, this is Steve G of the YYT for an Opus 17 Debt Tech Talk. Probably the most requested archetype I have on the channel and assorted social media is Silence of the Seventh Dawn. So without further ado, I would like to present the best Scion deck I have ever played, and it's absolutely awesome in the Opus 17 format. Scions was traditionally an Earth Lightning composition, and if you're the kind of person who thinks that a deck is built by putting one of each relevant name from that category or job into a deck, I am sorry to disappoint and say that Ida and Papalimo, who are still only one version and locked in Earth, they're not really up to the speed and strength of the game in Opus 12. 17 2022. However, the Yushtola legend from Opus 16, it was kind of forgotten at the time. It was in a bit of a weird element. There's lots of other Yushtolas that at the time everyone was like, oh, do we go Earth? Do we play all the Earth Yushtolas? Stuff like that. This Yushtola was kind of stuck because it didn't feel like there were particularly many Scion, particularly forwards, that were all that worth playing. That changed significantly with the onset of Opus 17 though, and the printing of Alice and Alphinote in Water Lightning, securely cementing this deck as a Water Lightning combination in my mind. Alice is a very generic recursion piece, but that is exactly what this deck needed. There are so many specials and there's so much critical mass that a little tool that can just assimilate things in your hand as the game goes on and very quickly becomes a free card recurring two things, that's just great. On entry, you can recur a forward other than card name Alice, bring it to your hand, and then on damage three, you can do the same again, but limited to Scion of the Seventh Dawn forwards. That shouldn't be too much of a problem. We've got 15 of them in the deck, so you'll, you're likely to have a target, particularly the more exclusive or the more particular ability, by the time you're on damage 3, you should have an eligible target for it, making Alice effectively free. Yushtola was nuts, and the little I played of Yushtola in Opus 16, usually using the monster Yurianger and the 7 CP Water Lightning Thangrid, Yushtola was always amazing. Power reduction is an incredible kind of removal. It's much harder to prevent than damage as a kind of removal. The trouble was getting one of my Scions killed on the stack and being knocked off that critical mass number. If I was trying to reduce an 8k or, or, or reduce something by 8k and then someone did a Bernhilder ping to kill off my Yurianger before you stole his ability resolved, that made me sad. That is so much less likely to happen now that you can overshoot numbers and that the forwards themselves are so much more robust on average. Enough about you stole for the time being. A little bit more about Alphinod. Alphinod does a lot of things for this deck. We play a couple of light cards, we're quite light on backups. Alphinod corrects all of that by, on entry, you draw two cards and discard a card from your hand. And then on damage five, he does that water lightning thing. I remember a few sets ago, water lightning damage five was all the rage with like the, the five cost Odin that becomes cheaper on damage five. Alphinod does all of that, but so, so much better. On damage five, you can choose a forward of cost four or less in your break zone and play it straight onto the field, other than more copies of Alphinod because that would be silly. I think the theory here is that Alphinod on damage five gets you your Alice, who then gets you two things back, and now you've kind of gotten two bodies and uh, you know two draws and a discard, effectively for free, but uh, the ceiling is actually a lot higher than that. The deck is incredibly flexible, and a lot of the time Alphinod will be recurring Yushtola to help you stabilize a little bit. You've got to remember as well that Yushtola, you can dull down any of your Scions to give any of your FF14 forwards haste and first strike. That is going to be absolutely huge because there are some things that it's easy to forget that they are FF14, and it's easy to forget that your little forwards, like Yuri Anger, can be used to kind of crew another forward and take away their summon sickness. This Yuri Anger has always been an interesting card. It's kind of a carbon copy of the Opus 8 Noctis. Look at the top two cards of your deck. If you find one that matches Yuri Anger's category, add it to your hand. This card has always teetered on the edge of viability, but particularly in Water Lightning, it just wasn't really good enough. And yeah, it, it was one of the more acceptable cards in the Earth Lightning deck, but it really shines here now that we're not playing any bad cards just because there's Ions. Almost the entirety of this deck is unironically really good on its own merit, and Yuri Anger has got over a 90% hit rate. We're playing a lot of FF14 backups, we're playing a lot of forwards, we can get away with playing fewer backups than normal just because we've got so many cards like Alphinod and Yuri Anger that can dig in times of need. Excellent card, and just very good for bolstering, again, your Yushtola numbers up to killing those 12Ks and 16K numbers. 
On the top end of the scale, we've got 7CP Thancred. Yes, he is a little bit of Amaterasu bait. It does suck to pay 7CP for this guy just to get the ability nullified and him blown up. In Amaterasu games, I would encourage you to be as aggressive as you can. Well, maybe not as aggressive as you can, but focus more on the lower costs. You know, aggressively costed cards, I guess I'm trying to say. Because it feels a lot worse to be an Amaterasu player sitting and waiting on the Thancred coming down and taking hits from a 2CP Alice and a 2CP Alphanod for multiple turns, it kind of uh, increases the, the need or the want to Amaterasu the wrong thing, and you Amaterasu with your Stola, and then suddenly Thancred's got a clear path. So Thancred, although I'm not playing any particular kind of cancellation in this deck, feel free if you want, but it is going to eat into your Yuri Anger success rate. I haven't found Amaterasu to be that much of a problem, just because the rest of the deck is so, so efficient. There's a sense of obligated to Amaterasu just about everything. Maybe you'll see what I mean if you give it a try. So that's all of the Scions in the deck, but an honorary Scion is the Oracle of Light, the, well, Light card. When the Oracle of Light dies and goes to the Break Zone, you can resurrect one of your Scions from Break Zone to Field Dull. The most powerful thing you can do here is resurrect a Thancred, kind of uh, feels like a magic reanimator deck or something, cheating something huge into play without paying the cost. We do have some ways to kill off our own Oracle of Light, but generally speaking, I don't really mind if it sticks on the field either, because all of your Scions gaining 2k is pretty huge, and the fact that we've now got more Scions in Water Lightning makes Oracle of Light definitely stronger in this deck than it used to be. Some other new stuff before I rant about more old things. We've got three copies in this deck of the new Red Mage. I thought it was rather odd to see some heroic standard units at first in Opus 17, particularly since some of them had a Mano art, and that's just really weird on standard units to me. But uh, yeah, we've got an FF14 Red Mage here. It's a 7k for three, like a lot of cards in this deck are, with a damage three ability. It's a very common threshold in this deck of giving one of your other forwards haste and 1k till end of turn. The huge thing here is you've got an optional overpay. You can pay lightning and one, which could be one single lightning card being discarded, to pop one of your opponent's forwards of cost four or less. That is a huge amount of the game and uh, red mage i've found is excellent for these grindy games you can kill your opponents smaller things with a red mage and save your stolas for the bigger stuff it's honestly the perfect card at the perfect time and it happens to be a standard unit as well that is very important for the next card here Water Gladiator is one of those old cards that gives me the fuzzies deep in my stomach because I just enjoy the stage of the game when that card came out, I suppose. But it's an FF14 backup. That means Yuri Andra can hit it or dig towards it. And being able to resurrect Red Mage is honestly really strong. If you don't believe me, please give it a try. It's rather unusual. I do really, really rate that particular interaction. And uh, I rate, in general, backups that can turn themselves into something more useful as a game goes on. Because there's so many things you're going to want to resurrect with Thancred here, I find that having a, a different thing to resurrect Red Mage is very easy for you to go from no field to an enormous field and kill quite a few things in a big swing turn. So if you like comeback decks, I must assure you this is the most fun you will ever have playing FFTCG. Some more non-Scions, but you've got to remember that you can give these haste with your Stola. Three copies of Lakshmi. I think it's very important to have ways to efficiently bully wind decks. Wind decks, you're probably tired of me saying this, but they really rule the roost up here in Glasgow and are very, very popular in some of the peak player bases like in London. You no need to know how to pressure wind decks and you need to be able to beat them before they get a ridiculous Bismarck chain online. It just so happens that all of these pseudo two cost 7Ks and Lakshmi who can very quickly become kind of a free forward and, and dig you towards victory, they are very good at pressuring those kind of games and uh, helps you as well with your slightly lower than normal backup count. I think I'm on uh, 15 backups in this list. As always, the list is right there in the description if you would like to net deck, feel free. We've got three copies of Leviathan here as well. This is kind of tempo-ish, but it's also kind of control-ish. It's, uh, I guess you'd call it mid-range then, I guess. But uh, every mid-range deck wants a good board wipe for when things go sour. Leviathan happens to fit the bill by being relatively easy to find with Yuri Anger and a couple of our other searches, and is a 14, so we can cheekily give it haste off Yustola as well if need be. On to the summons. These are less 14-oriented, but nonetheless very powerful. Three copies of Fanfrit. It's not a piece of removal that I rate all that much typically because your opponent gets to decide what dies. However, when there is something on our side of the field that benefits from dying, the stock of Fanfrit goes way up. You've probably experienced Fanfrit Porum from Opus 9 by now. Well, being able to sacrifice the Oracle of Light during the opponent's turn is very, very powerful. It's a lot harder to accurately time your Amaterasus when you're capable of effectively playing Thancred at instant speed on the back of a Fanfrit, and although Thancred will enter the field dull, anything he resurrects is not subject to that same restriction on the Oracle of Light, so bear that in mind. 
Another mini board wipe that I've found very effective so far in this set, just because I see a lot of twins in my area as well. A couple of copies of Ixion. In an absolute pinch, you could kill all three costs or less during your opponent's turn as well to kill off the Oracle of Light, but that is a slightly more expensive maneuver. It is still quite a strong techie card. Two copies of Ramu, generally good for giving haste, generally good for finding lethals on crowded boards, and it pops monsters, which is very good in this day and age. And two copies of Kuchulain to slow down stuff like Cyans and Tenzens and the like that have got these very dangerous abilities over time. On to the backups. Three copies of Thordon leading the charge. That's kind of our star Sybil. He's got a kind of a strong demanding daddy energy that's very important for uh, setting up our cross color combinations. Two copies of Louiswa and one copy of Merylwib to search out the rest of the deck. Louiswa can get either of our Wonder Twins, Merylwib for any of the Water Forwards. All of these again are FF14 backups for Yurianger's hit rate. And a couple of copies of Black Mage. It's the backup I'm least proud of in this deck, but being able to get back Ramu at a moment's notice gives your opponent more to think about, and it kind of discourages your opponent from just rebuilding Turbo Twins again to get Ixion a second time. Lastly, rounding out the deck, if I thought there were enough really good FF14 backups, I probably wouldn't play these at all, but three copies of Sarah and one copy of Princess Sarah as another way of fixing our curve. It's very nice to have a searchable odd-costed backup for rounding out those turns, and it's nice to be able to decide whether we want more water CP to increase Thancred's size of Resurrect, or another bit of lightning CP to increase the things that Thancred can break. And also, Princess Sarah is very convenient for letting Thancred live through an Amaterasu. You've got to remember that if you can pump him up to 9k and then he survives, you might be able to give Thancred haste off of your Stola and still get some value off him that turn, even if your opponent does prevent the resurrect part. So that is Scions in Opus 17. Please give it a try. It's not a mindless aggro deck. It's not like, you know, Alice back up turn one, two Scions, maybe I'll haste you out on turn three. But honestly, I don't think that kind of deck was particularly fun for either party and certainly wasn't getting results anywhere in the world. Please give this a try. It's got to be one of the best places to use some of the recent legends and Alice and Alphinote are a match made in heaven, especially if you like taking damage like me. Thank you very much for watching. Decklist is in the description as always, and I hope to see you at an event real soon. Bye-bye.